These days, people are getting pretty concerned about rainforests. As the huge areas of rainforest are being cut down in South America, they're beginning to worry about the loss of the lungs of the world. They're starting to realize, too, that we don't know a lot about rainforests. We don't understand how the plants work in them and how they all interconnect together. So people are beginning to study rainforests. The trouble is, what do you do if you live in places like Adelaide, down in the dry parts of Australia, where you haven't got a rainforest within Kui and you can't get into them to study them? Well, one answer is this. You build your own. This is an artificially created rainforest. It's in the Bicentennial Conservatory for Tropical Plants in Adelaide Botanic Gardens. And you won't find all tropical plants here. It's specialising in the tropical plants of Australia and Southeast Asia, our region. The conservatory is a remarkable building. For one thing, it's very big. It's at least as tall as a 10-storey building. But its real interest lies not in its height, but in its shape. It's known as a curvilinear shape. It's rather like a boat turned over on its back. And where in the boat you would find a keel running its full length is, in the conservatory, a huge curved backbone. It's immensely strong, so strong that it supports the entire building on its own. You don't need beams inside it or pillars. You can use all the space for growing flowers. But there's another advantage to the shape as well. Adelaide is an extremely sunny place. And of course, sun is not too good for tropical plants like these. Too much, and they would die. So this shape and its placement means that there's never more than one sixth of the building at any time that gets the full glare of the sun. And that, of course, makes conditions inside very good for the plants. Conditions here don't have to be good. They have to be excellent. And that's handled by this, the computer. Up in the ceiling, you can see long wands, and they're actually computer probes. They're sampling the atmosphere. They're sampling it for humidity, for temperature, and for airflow. And they send all the information they gather back to this. And the computer knows what the plants need, and it makes some decisions. It can decide, for example, if the airflow isn't enough, to open up those louvers automatically. And if the place is too cold, you'll see it puts extra heat through the heat exchanger and warms it up. When it decides it's right, it can make it rain. And of course, when the humidity is low, it can turn on the mist and the clouds. Now those nozzles shoot out water, but they don't shoot out rain. The droplets are so fine, you'd have to regard it as mist or cloud. Many tropical rainforests sit up in the mountains, and they're bathed in low-lying cloud or lots and lots of fog. It's important. It acts as a barrier between the sun and the plants that otherwise would die from too much sunlight. So the same thing has to be done here. The fog is released into this building and it sits there, really like a low-lying cloud. You can see it hovering around about head height. And in the same way, the plants underneath it are protected from the bright Adelaide sun. Well, of course, it rains in rainforests and it rains here too. And all of the water that comes down, in this case in the middle of the night so it doesn't hit the spectators, collects underneath the ground and it's run off. And it's recycled after being hygienically disinfected. And with conditions about as perfect as you could get inside here, you can begin the planting. And it began about seven weeks ago. When they talk about the fertility of a rainforest, this is the sort of thing they mean. This plant went from there to there in just seven weeks. And this one did much the same sort of thing. It's grown from there right up to there. It's an extraordinary rate of growth. They reckon that by the time this place opens in five months' time, all the trees will be at least twice as big, and the ground will be pretty thickly covered with plants of one kind or another. And it's growing the way a real rainforest grows. First of all, the tall trees go up, they spread out, provide a canopy, and in its shade, the other ground creepers and the ground covers will grow. And with the rainforest starting to take place, we can begin to see how it works, how the plants work with each other, and indeed, how they work with the animals of the rainforest. They've got some peculiar habits. Some plants really act to capture whatever moisture is there. This one, for example, has channels running down the leaf right to the stem. So any water that falls is conducted by those into here and it runs down the stem and ends up in the centre of the plant. Other rainforest plants work almost in reverse. This one, for example, lives in the shadowy parts of the forest and because there's not much light, it grows gigantic leaves to capture what light it can to make its food. The trouble is, gigantic leaves also catch a lot of rain and the rain can be so heavy it could break the leaves off. So they're carefully designed. You can see they've got gutters that run all the way down there and the water can drip from the tip. And that way, even in the heaviest rainfall, the water just slides off the leaf and doesn't damage the plant. 
You won't find as many bees in a rainforest as you will in a garden. So the flowers here are really good for other sorts of insect carriers. See, these are right down at the ground. Not good for bees, but very good for ants and beetles that come along, drink the nectar, and carry the pollen around from flower to flower. In other parts of the forest, like that, you find brilliant flowers which are very good for attracting birds, and they carry the pollen from flower to flower too. Well, this rainforest is very new, and it's just started to grow. But give it a year, and it'll be so tall, you probably won't even see this blue walkway that I'm on. But if you come here and walk along it, you'll get an unusual sight. You'll be able to look down on a rainforest all around you.